you gotta let me know Should I stay or should I go And if you say that you're a mine I'll be here till the end of time So you gotta let me know Should I stay or should I go It's always taste, taste, taste You're happy when I'm on my knees One day is fine, the next is black So if you want me off your back Well, come on, let me know Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble And if I stay, it will be double So come on, let me know Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash, all-time punk rock classic. This one is a special request from my assistant, Lorene, who helps me and the website out in so many different ways. YouTube thumbnails, website copy, organizing things. Lorene, really appreciate your help and support over the last few years. So this one's for you. Let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. So we're starting off here with a regular D chord. And then we're moving to a G chord, we want this G, so second finger moves down to the third fret on the thicker string, fifth string is muted, open, open, third finger, fourth finger, both in the third fret on the thinnest two strings. We're going to play all down strums and we're going to start on the and after one, so one and two and three and four and one. Okay, really important, all down strums starting on the and after one, one and two and change the G, three and four and one. Now after that last D chord, we're gonna use the outside part of our hand here to touch down on all of the strings. So we keep the chord nice and short. One and two and three and four and one. Mute, three, four, one and two and three and four and one. Two, three, for definitely get that right before you do anything else. Really, really important that you get that right and the feeling of it. One. Now, in the intro, there's a couple of little fancy bits. Uh, there's some clicks on beats two, three, and four after the first time around. So you have one, two, three, four, two, three, four. So literally muting all of the strings here and just. Just doing a little strum here on beats two, three, and four. Second time, one, two, three, and is fifth fret to eighth fret with a hammer on it. Might be tenth fret to thirteenth fret on the second string, I can't really tell. I did watch a couple of live videos and it does seem that it's further up the, the neck, but it sounds to me like it's on the thinner string. So either one of those, it's going to be the same notes. Uh, after the third time, Darling, you gotta let me D, G, D. Should I stay or should I go? If you say that you are mine. Now here, this is an interesting little bit because it's going G to F to G. But that's already awkward, even for me to go from G like that to F like that. It's like a lot of hand movement. Uh, and if you watch the band playing it themselves, they do G like this and F like that. Now, you might not have done bar chords if you're still a beginner. You might be like, oh, I'm not doing no bar chords. Well, this one isn't really a bar chord. If you've learned little F like this, you've probably also realized that you can put your third finger over onto the third string, little finger goes onto the fourth string. So we're not playing the thicker string at all, that's muted by the tip of our third finger there. And then we're playing third fret, third fret, second fret, first fret, first fret. Thumb usually probably wants to sit around the back here somewhere, it doesn't, not really super important where on the back it sits, but somewhere around the back. So that's an F. So long as you're not playing that thicker string, you can move that up two frets 
and you've got your G. It is like a G, big G bar chord, and if you wanted to, you could go. If you're already familiar with your bar chords, that's perfectly legit as well. But it does seem like the actual band are playing it this way and leaving that bass note to the bass player, which is perfectly fine. So it is, it's that little F shape moved up two frets, G, F, G, mute. Same pattern, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and back to D. Second verse, it's always T's, T's, D, G, D, mute, always oh, on my knees, D, G, D, one day is fine, the next is black, maybe you can get your hands in the position early, so if you want me off your back, D, G, D, well come on and let me know, a. I forgot to mention that in the first verse. I just skipped over a little bit in the first verse. Doesn't matter. Okay, so this is an A chord. Probably you're going to use an, a first finger mini bar. You could play regular A like that if you're struggling with doing this one. Using the three fingered version is perfectly legit as well. I think I hear on the original recording on the very last A, which is the one that falls on the beat, one and two and three and four and one. That last one, I think, I hear third finger going down on the third fret of the thinner string, which makes it an A7 chord. Again, wouldn't really necessarily have to do that, but I think it can kind of sound cool. And then... First violin, you gotta let me know. Should I stay or should I go? If you say that you are mine... I'll be here till the end of time So you gotta let me know Should I stay or should I go? One more time, it's always tease, tease, tease You're happy when I'm on my knees One day is fine, the next is black So if you want me off your back Well, come on and let me know should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Now, obviously it goes a little bit crazy at that point. The actual chords stay exactly the same. You just stay on the chord for the second part. So D, G, stay on the D. Should I stay or should I go now? So it goes into this double time, much faster feeling. It is called double time. It's twice as fast, the feeling. Uh, strumming wise, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 from that double time section into the normal one is to play the D chord just on beat two. So from um, A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so let me just go through that again. So the strumming pattern, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Okay, same pattern uh, on the G to the F and then back to the G. It does go G, F, G and stays on the G. It doesn't go back to the F. There is a temptation to go G, F, G, F. 
Yeah. And to be honest, it doesn't sound bad. In fact, I think I might have played it that way incorrectly as a teenager because that I keep doing it, and uh, that would usually mean that I learned it a long time ago. Somewhere in the programming, it's got a little bit uh, ropey, but it doesn't do that. So I'm going to do it one more time through that section. Hopefully, uh, you get those chords there. So, <laughs> should I stay or should I do? <laughs> me just to the am I supposed to be etc so the song is going through uh, the verses are always that kind of half time feel pretty much exactly what we played there then the double time verses are like super duper fast same chord progression just make sure that you don't uh, make the change too often so D G D D would be the sequence uh, that you're thinking about when you're playing that uh, it plays the double time chorus twice at the end and finishes with a and that's it you've got the whole tune it's a real fun one to play along with a great party favorite as well if you've got friends that are into the punk thing just because it's such a high energy thing everyone knows the well not everyone a lot of people are going to know the words for the verses and then go into the double time part where it gets all a bit frantic loads and loads of fun really hope you enjoyed this thanks again Lorene, for requesting this one i'll see you for plenty more lessons very very soon you all take care of yourselves bye bye